to the viewers, the coders, the non-techie guys, the business guys, welcome back to our little humble little podcast, Launch Time. We've decided that that we're going to have these conversations with uh, the different geniuses, whiz kids, ninjas in the team. You've seen me interview our managing director, uh, Bruce. I've interviewed Jay, the head of design and marketing, but somehow that episode never made it. So that's kind of sus. Is that, is that kind of sus? It's a bit sus. Not fine. It's yeah. always experimental. <laughs> but um, we're bringing in today Chow, also known as Chow Burger. Um, yeah. Chow, what's up, man? Good, good. Um, it's a uh, nice sunshine outside. Nice and sunny today. Um, Chow, just for the uh, benefit of the people watching and listen or, or, or listening, um, can, can you tell us what, what, what is it that you do in Putty? Right, so my name is Z Chow, but I go by Chow um, just because I like it. And I'm the head of mobile at Putty. Basically, I manage the mobile team, and so I'm responsible for anything mobile related in this organization. iOS, Android, or cross platform development. That's, that's in my wheelhouse. Why do you, why do you use Chow and not Z Chow? It's just short and sweet, I guess. I mean. Because I, I, like, my first English name was like Charles, but I thought that was a bit too posh. Charles? Yeah, because like Charles, Charles. And then and then I thought, yeah, I'll just go back to my So name. So the happy middle between Z Chow and Charles is Chow. Uh, yeah, I just, I went back to my roots. I see and it, then, I and see then it. Chow is nice middle ground. I get it, yeah. makes sense. And it's easy, easy to pronounce. All right, so how, how long have you been um, heading the, the the app development team, you know? Well, I've been in, like, I've been doing mobile or mobile dev for the past 10 years or so. Um, 10 years? Oh my God. Yeah, it's been a pretty long time. And as well as I kind of started doing mobile dev around the time when iPhone 4 first came out. iPhone 4? Yeah, that was, that was my first. <laughs> That was my first iPhone and... But that goes way back. That was uh, a yeah, long time ago. Long time ago. That's probably the origin story, like, because we got our first iPhone and then we thought that was uh, probably going to start a new era of computing. And then, then, and then it was at the time when we kind of not sure what to do, what to do um, like career-wise or not to do what. Uh, as like uh, how to deal with the next steps in our own lives. Um, so then I chose, or we kind of collectively chose to focus on uh, mobile dev. And that's how a super villain was born, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, so let's make this a little bit about you, right? Like, what do you, what do, you do on the weekend, man? I normally take my kids out. Um, I am um, shopping, not shopping, like win window shopping. Oh! Um, I don't do video games anymore. No. I should I should have that like podcast sound effect. Mostly <laughs> <laughs> window shopping. I mean, it's not really because um, uh, I've got a daughter and then uh, she don't want to stay at home over the weekend, and so as as kind of our family mission as to what to do with her during the weekends. Yeah. And, uh, it's always it's always a thing, right? Like, oh my god, so much pressure on 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 the dad or the mom to figure out what the heck are we doing this weekend? Yeah, exactly. So if the if the weather is good, then we'll take it out to anything and outdoor. But if weather's bad, then it's window shopping, malls, and library. Yeah, that's my. Lo those are my goals. That sounds, ex sounds exciting, child. Yeah, sounds. That's very me, and I like being. Close. How does the entire family feel about being in the library? Well, I think it's good to get a, a daughter into an environment that's filled with books. That's how I grew up. Come on, come on. I agree <laughs> with that. I agree with that fully, fully. That's why I think physical books are important. Even though True. I've got a lot of ebooks, but having the presence of physical books is important for young people to actually 
um, develop that sort of uh, uh, oh, affection. affection. Yeah, affection for the, yeah. Like when you go when you go into a bookstore, there's a there's a smell like a smell of the smell of ink kind yeah, of right. situation and like what do you call these people who love bibliophile bibliophile people who love nerds, uh, nerds nerds there you go but like um so i made a little rule for my kids if you ask me for a toy then you'll probably get like a like a two three month kind of approval situation if you ask me for a book and maybe within the week you'll get the book and so i think they've learned that yeah. um <laughs> i'll just go ask for a book <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so in the span of your years in, in Putty and uh, the, the mobile apps that you've developed, or maybe even um, maybe you've even touched on stuff that's outside of mobile and and uh, other things. What typically would you would you say the the clients come in with? Like, what what do they do they do they bring a challenge in, or do they bring a what do they come in here with, and what have you heard? Uh, what have you experienced? Well, they always come in with. Uh, either problems or they come in with a vision or they come in with a, a, a set of goals they want to achieve depending on the types of clients. The, the problem ones are usually easier because uh, a lot of time, even though the problems may not be well defined initially, but at least they have a, a more concrete things that we can work on. Let's unpack that. Let's unpack that because most of the time, and, and I'm the I'm the least techy guy I would think in in the company as well. Um, I would say I'm experienced in business more than I'm experienced in in tech. So let's talk about that a little bit. Where where you said the problems are not clearly defined at the beginning. Do you find that most of the time they come in here with a problem that's quite far from the actual problem. They're just they're kind of experiencing the symptoms, experiencing yeah, the, yeah. The, out, the outcome. Yeah, it's like uh, when you go to a doctor, like the only thing you can explain to a doctor is the symptoms. It's the surface level uh, problems. Yeah, um, yeah, I love and, that analogy. Yeah. And then and then as we find out, uh, as the time goes on, once we start discussing or asking more questions, uh, the actual maybe more sort of a, um, critical, not critical, but more of like um, real problems start to surface. Um, so that's where things get more interesting or more challenging because now it's more visceral. <laughs> not, well, n okay, I get it because it, it's almost like a journey of yeah. basically, it's like peeling, peeling back an onion, right? Like yeah. layers and layers of like, so I come to you with like, hey, I have this issue in the business and you're like, okay, uh, what? Yeah, we have these pain points. The, these yeah. pain points, and so you kind of peel them back, peel them back, peel them yeah. back. Is it too much to ask if you were to kind of give me a, a story or an example of something that's kind of uh, they come in here with a little tiny thing, and then you you unpack it and you find, oh crap, you have a, a much deeper issue. Yeah, I think it's hard to come up with a real, I mean, concrete one to. For example, if they want to automate some process, so they they have this problem uh, that is quite manual and yeah, they, yeah. they find it time consuming and error prone and so they want to automate that. And then we start asking how how is the current process um, like operates? Like how does it what does it, what constitutes that problem or that process? And they start getting into the details of what the, each steps are, who will be involved in this steps. So this becomes a more uh, more defined as we start asking more questions. And also that becomes like certain steps may not be easily automated. Yeah. And in that case, we probably need to f like break down break it down more yeah we yeah so we just need to start asking so is, is there a you, you know in, in the in the past 10 uh, decade of doing this have you kind of um formalized or even kind of uh remember the journey of kind of giving structure to this kind of process of of digging and and unpacking and you know peeling back the you know issues or the situation I guess it's trying, uh, from our perspective, it's really trying to see, to break down 
each process as much as possible. Like a one process can, as like one process consists of many 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 processes. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we try to see if how how much we can break down for each process, and then and then to the point that if we can't go any further, that means we probably hit the point that we can start thinking about how we can automate each little baby step. It's hard to, because that really depends on the context, but sure. the, the general rule is to break things down. And sure. Once, once things are kind of you know, at a point of, I guess, simplification or like you know, the, the, the core, then you can start thinking about how to go about you know structuring it yeah. and then what tech to use or to build yeah. around that yeah i think the tech probably counts a bit later once we have the general architecture or structure in place and then we can discuss because because the, the choice of tech also it's very very pre preferential like it's preferential to us also preferential to client because client may yeah. have preferences for certain test stacks and then so that comes a bit later and um, mm. we are kind of flexible in in the sense that um usually um we are pretty adaptable and then so that means we'll try to fit uh, fit the tech to their liking i mean would you say even that like building building the technology whether it be software middleware erp or, or, or apps or mobile development would you say that that's like the easier part? Um, once you know the problems, then... Well, once you know the problems. That's true. And and you did say that... Of course, there is like... The, uh, the, that's some challenges yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the dev is in the details. So there's always... Um, the dev is in the details? Yeah. The so dev? The devil. The devil. Yeah. The devil's in the... The devil's oh, no. in the details, yeah, yeah, no, but the devs also in the details. Yeah, <laughs> we need to make that a line. Yeah. Hey, new tagline for Putty: the dev is in the details. Hey, yeah, oh, that's very apt, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this different set of challenges, but the larger, so the the architectural challenges is, is the more of a make and break things. Like, is your problem solvable? Or is your problem solvable within that budget? So that's the larger yeah. problem. And then the the actual tech is more like details. Like, can we use this technology yeah. to solve that problem? And because yeah. a lot of the time you can make compromises in the tech problems. Like yeah. maybe we can't, but we can use something that's maybe not as good or uh, or cheaper or more expensive depending on the context and yeah. try, but may not be 100% solve the problem but at least it can solve 90% but the, the, the first like the larger problem the, the, uh, the overall kind of a big picture problem is the one that's if there's a solve problem that's the bigger problem that we need to answer so there it is and, and um would you say that that has become kind of a, a special power? Yeah, to, yeah, I agree that I think that's the problem that um, we kind of very good at tackling uh, initially, like asking the right, breaking the problems down into things that is, is it solvable within the budget? If it's not, then can we increase budget and that becomes solvable? Or is it just fundamentally yeah. a hard challenge there? It takes more than just money. It maybe it takes uh, maybe it takes training, or we need to wait for the next wave of technology or next generation. I'm I'm tempted to almost like model this whole conversation out into a structured kind of system or process because it, it does sound like I mean I know that there is like Sean, you, Moon, Jay. You have a way of looking at. Even Bruce, you know, uh, you have a way of dealing with, I need this, I want this built. And then you go, okay, let's talk about this, let's talk about this, let's talk about that and see, okay, if, if it's like a sound, you know, direction or, you know. 
Yeah, I think they all come from different perspectives. So I think that's the that's how we complement each other because they maybe Sean come from more uh, like a, a product background or, or product perspective. So yeah. we're trying to see if it, it makes uh, makes sense being a product or does it fit the market? Yeah. And me, I mean, as me will come from more like tech background. Is it like te technically possible? Does it does it need does it violate any um, like because I'm dealing with mo mobile dev, um, so I need to deal with like regulations put forward by or put in place by Apple or Google. Uh, does this particular business model violate their terms and conditions? Things like that. So I come from more like tech and, and mobile background. Maybe more is more like a architectural and the uh, background. When we are in client meetings, we are kind of all there trying to uh, peel back the problem, but from different angles, like an onion, it's, you, you can't peel back from this angle, because that's you get to the core, yes, but there are still other hidden parts that are not revealed. Do you double as a chef as well? Because you're like talking about, um, do you work as a chef at night or? I can cook. Oh, you can cook? Let him cook. Let him cook. What's 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 the recipe? What's, what's your recipe that you can cook blind, like without effort? Oh. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> What recipe scrambled eggs? Well, it's, uh, it's my, it's my, um, my secret weapon. Oh, your secret weapon. Okay, well, Chuck. It's, it's not easy to make good scrambled eggs. I say you need to make burgers your um, your prime thing because it's like a chow burger, man. Uh, Come yeah. on. Yeah, I was given that name. I didn't choose that name. One of my favorite fast food restaurants in the Philippines is called Chow King. Oh, right. oh. yeah. My so, favorite. your favorite? Rapid fire questions. You ready? You ready? Okay, code or no code? Depending on context. Depending on context. Uh, I'm leaning towards code because I'm a coder. Oh, code. Co so there it is. One monitor, multi monitor. Multi, multi. Yeah. What? What for? So I can have more things on the screens. Oh, okay. Work with music or no music? No music in general. No music in general. Yeah. Oh my. God. Unless you're doing something very repetitive, then music's fine. But if you need to, you need to do something creative. Then no music. Long emails or short emails? Long long emails or short uh, long emails or long meetings? Long emails. <laughs> long emails. <laughs> okay. Function or form? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, probably function. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Ciao. Thank you so much, yes. man. Thank you for hanging out. Cool. Hey, look. Um, one of the few things that you need to get excited about, and I'm this this is a little bit of a, a shameless plug for for what we're doing here on this podcast is uh, we might be releasing a series where we're going to actually talk about our tech essentials or our day to day essentials being in the life of uh, uh, here in Putty here in um, Auckland's New Zealand's best tech shop. So it's been awesome hanging out with you. This has been Tom and Chow. See you on the next one. See ya. Peace. Bye. Bye.